welcome back! This week is the beginning of Bread Week with our signature challenge. The challenge is 36 Italian breadsticks made from a yeasty dough. So I'm starting ahead with room temperature water. And I choose to use active dry yeast that I'm adding to my water. As well as a pinch of sugar. This will make sure that the yeast has something to feed on to make sure it's active. We mix it up and set it aside. This is our plan, a pepperoni breadstick and a goat cheese dip. I will add pepperoni bits inside the dough as well as some fermented and garlic chili paste that I homemade previously. We are mixing our dry ingredients. It's semolina flour for the Italian flavor as well as the added snap and some bread flour. Bread flour has added gluten to it which makes the dough be able to stretch a little more and has a better structure for the bread. We're adding some salt for flavor, a fair amount, as well as some paprika, both for the smoky flavor and the color it will add to the dough. I mix all of my dry ingredients together and create a well in the middle of the bowl. Now to the wet ingredient. It's a quarter cup of olive oil that I will also use to grease my proofing bowl. Our yeast and water mixture and another cup of room temperature water. And I'm mixing everything by hand at first before putting it uh, with the dough hook in the standing mixer. And then we will knead the dough until it pulls away from the side. I will realize soon that I have forgotten my fermented garlic paste. I'm adding it now. I'm slicing the pepperoni and frying it off and adding progressively more flour when I see that the mixer is struggling. You can see it's vibrating pretty hard. That's normal, this is a professional grade mixer, so I'm not too, too worried about the noise of the vibration, but this is definitely a dough that will make your mixer work a lot, as you can see. Don't walk away, but keep an eye on it, and the dough was pulling away from the side. So it's time to add our fried off pepperoni. Give that a mix. And then we are gonna scrape that very wet dough in our proofing bowl, cover it with film and let it rest at a warm temperature for about an hour 45 minutes. It's time to make our dip which is going to be starting with Icelandic yogurt, you can use Greek yogurt, that's what I had on hand, some goat cheese and the fresh herbs you can see. So we have some mint, a little bit of basil and some scallion but first we want to make sure that our yogurt to goat cheese mixture is very smooth. And we're going to pick all of our fresh mint leaves, roll them into a little bit of a cigar, and slice them finely. And we'll do the same process for the basil. Incorporate that to our mixture. And I tasted it, but it needed a bit more seasoning, some salt, some pepper and a little bit of acidity. So I added the juice of a mayo lemon, just about two tablespoons. Taste it again, that was much better. 
time to put it in my favorite utensil, the piping bag. And we'll leave that in the fridge until we're ready to use it. I had leftover lemon juice and some mint, so I'll show you as a bonus how to make one of my favorite drink. It's called citron pressé. And apparently it's not very common in North America. So you have some lemon juice, you top it up with seltzer, add your fresh leaves, and that's a refreshing drink when your kitchen is very warm. And while it's proofing, I'm gonna take a break and walk the dog because I have 45 minutes of wait time. Once we're back, do wash your hands. Finish your drink, still pretty warm. And the dough has risen. We're gonna prepare our pans with a fair bit of olive oil to make sure that our breadstick won't stick. Add some flour to our work surface. Not too, too much. I know the dough will be looking sticky, but if I add too much flour, it will make the dough uh, a little bit too tough. I am degassing it, flattening it out with my fingers, and then I'll portion out with my bench scraper. So I'm supposed to make 36 breadsticks. So I had to do a little bit of math, six times six. And keep the pieces that you're not using uh, wrapped so they don't dry out. It's a pretty wet and fatty dough with the addition of the olive oil. So unless you work really, really slowly, I don't think that the dough will dry out. But if you're working with a sourdough or uh, anything that does not have oil or fat in it, I will recommend yeah, putting it under a saran wrap. We're going to put our portions of dough into little spheres and then we're rolling them out with our hands once we have the right number. It was part of the requirement that it had to be a minimum of 10 inches long so that's why I put my ruler out. So I had to make them at least 14 inches because I was accounting for shrinkage once the dough relaxes and bakes off as well. And I'm using that uh, inside to outside motion for all of them, adding a very gentle pressure to stretch the dough out. And once they're all ready, I put one batch in the oven and start with the other batch. I only have two half sheet pans and only have two racks in my oven anyway so I had to roll out the second batch as the first batch was in the oven and keeping consistency throughout the batches is going to be a challenge in this signature challenge and I will use the same process inside to outside and you can see I'm getting better and the breadsticks are a little more consistent, a little thinner as I go along. So practice makes perfect. And I'm juggling between my pans, making sure that I have enough time to bake the four batches that I needed for the 36 breadsticks. That's the last batch in the oven. Time to put our dip in a pretty container and wrap our breadsticks. And one of them did snap and that was to be accounted for. They are fairly fragile, especially when warm and I was running out of time. So I shimmied it into the circle and there we are, 36 breadsticks. A very large amount of breast steaks for such a small amount of dip. I thought I measured wrong. And we're done! My judges this week are Lori and Ben, 
quickly came over to eat some breadsticks. They both said that it was very edible. They liked the flavor of it. However, they would not describe the flavor as pepperoni-like. They were missing that meatiness, that garlicness from the pepperoni and suggested that I would have added some pepperoni spices, not necessarily more pepperoni bits into the dough. They both noticed that the breadsticks were snappy in some places and soft in others. I account that to the lack of time in those last batches. However, they both really enjoyed the dip, funny enough. I quote, that dip is exactly what I want a dip to be. Isn't that a compliment? And they settled on a score of 7 and 9 out of 11. Visit tinyfrenchbacon.com for more info and I'll catch you up next week for the technical.